Hi everyone, hope this video finds you well. We're going to continue on with our lessons on crimes and we're shifting gears a little bit here. And instead of looking at crimes against the person, which usually involves somebody either getting injured or killed or threatened in some manner, we're now going to look at crimes against property. And crimes against property mostly deal with destruction or theft of property. One of the things that I want you guys to keep in mind is that a lot of states have their own laws regarding these crimes. And sometimes you might hear, especially if you go to law school, what's referred to as the common law. And common law is basically like old time, outdated law before the states had statutes. So <clears throat> we, we're not going to look at that. Um, I will explain some of the differences where they are applicable, but what we're going to be looking at here is the law that applies in the state of Pennsylvania. All right, so our first one is arson, and arson involves the willful and malicious burning of a person's property. Note that it doesn't say of another person's property, because technically you can commit arson of your, on your own property. And some of you might be thinking, well, why would anyone burn down their own property on purpose? And usually it involves some type of insurance fraud, insurance fraud, excuse me. So you might have somebody that has a piece of property that they can't pay off or they're trying to sell and nobody wants it. And you might see all of a sudden um, it burns down under mysterious circumstances. <clears throat> and what happened was they burned it down themselves, staged it to look like an accident for the purpose of collecting the insurance policy on it. And if you do get caught doing that, that can actually um, be more than one crime. You could get in trouble for arson. You could also get in trouble for insurance fraud there. All right, so it's, it has to be willful and malicious. So it has to be something that you did intentionally, accidental, um, you know, accidents don't count. If you leave a candle burning and you fall asleep and your house catches on fire, you're not going to be in trouble for arson. Um, and it has to be malicious. So for example, you might have a firefighter who sets a building on fire because they're told to do it so that the fire company can engage in some type of like practice. Um, in that case, it is willful burning of property. You did it on purpose, but it's not malicious because they did a controlled burn to use it as practice. So we do want to make sure that we are precise when we're stating all of the elements, because if you take even one element out, it can change the meaning of the crime. Uh, the next one that we're going to talk about here, guys, is vandalism. And if you're in Pennsylvania, you're going to be charged with what is called criminal mischief. It's usually vandalism usually falls under criminal mischief. And the elements are <clears throat> the willful destruction of or damage to the property of another. So what we're looking at here, guys, um, sort of all the typical things you think of when you think of vandalism. Um, and we had some of this, unfortunately, at the old school. We haven't seen too much of it at the uh, TJ 2.0. But if you'll recall, um, <clears throat> and I'm not going to name any names here, but we did have some instances where maybe some of the boys were doing things like tearing doors off of the stalls in the bathrooms or knocking down the soap dispensers, things like that. Um, technically, that would be criminal mischief. Technically, that's a crime in Pennsylvania because you are willfully destroying and damaging that property. When we are charging you with criminal mischief in Pennsylvania, what we're going to look at is the degree of the crime. Um, and we're going to base that on essentially how much damage did you cause. So if you take your pencil and you carve your initials into a desk in my classroom, technically a crime, you have damaged the property, but you're not going to go to jail for like a year over it because the amount is going to be relatively low. If you damage, say, a building or a landmark or someone's car, um, you're going to start to see higher amounts so the penalty could go up. All right, so what we're actually going to do is look at the dollar amount of the crime, or I'm sorry, the dollar amount of the damage that you caused to try to figure out how serious of a crime we're going to charge you with. Guys, larceny is one that sounds really fancy. It's really not. And larceny is probably a word that you have not heard before. And when we look at larceny, basically, if we just take away the elements for a moment, larceny is basically stealing someone else's stuff. Um, that's really the lay term for it. If you take something that belongs to someone and you're not breaking into their house, you're not using force or a threat, um, you just take something that belongs to someone. Maybe they're not paying attention. Um, maybe you have somebody sitting on a park bench and they are turned the other way and you walk by and you scoop up their purse and keep walking. 
All right, that's larceny. So let's take a look at the elements here. We have the unlawful taking. So again, you have to be taking something that you don't legally have the right to take and carrying away. So if I walk up to a park bench and let's say um, Abby is sitting on the bench, but she's turned the other way talking to Nick and I grab her purse and then I set it right back down, um, that's not going to be larceny because even though I took it and I did not have a legal right to take it, I did not carry it away. If I would start walking away with it at that point, we're going to see larceny. Okay. It has to be property. And somebody said, well, what else could it be? Well, it could be a child, in which case it would be kidnapping. Um, but we are looking at property and property does include animals. So you can have a theft crime that involves an animal. All right. Um, it has to be property that belongs to someone else. So you can't unlawfully take your own property. And you have to have the intent to permanently deprive the owner. And this is a key here, guys. You have to be taking it with the intent that you will not give it back to the person from whom you took it. So let's say Abby is sitting on a park bench. Her head is turned because she's talking to Nick. I walk over. I see her purse and I think, wow, this is a really nice purse. I'm going to pick it up and see what label it is because I'd like to buy myself one. All right. If I pick it up thinking, well, I'm only going to look at it and then I'm going to set it right back down. Um, even if I walk a couple steps, well, this tree is shading my light and I can't see it. I know this is sort of a rid ridiculous example, but bear with me. Um, <clears throat> let's say I walk out into the open sunlight. I take a few steps away from her so I can take a good look at the purse. All right. Even though I may have fulfilled the first four elements there, since I intend to turn around and give it right back to her, it's not larceny. Now, a lot of you are probably sitting there thinking, how would you ever prove that? And again, um, if this were actually something that was a, a trial, if this were actually something that I was being charged with, then it probably would come down to whether or not a jury believed what I said. Um, I think you'd be hard pressed to convince a jury. Uh, yes, I took this person's purse when they weren't looking and I did start to walk away with it, but I promise I was going to give it back. And that's a whole nother can of worms. But what we're talking about here, guys, is in theory, okay? So in terms of like the hypothetical, you kind of have to just buy into what I'm telling you. So assuming that I intend to give it back to her right away, um, it would not be larceny. Now, if I walk by and I take it with the intent to keep it, now we have larceny, okay? Um, and in Pennsylvania, you'll see grand larceny and petty larceny. And again, what we're going to look at is the value of what you took. If you took a purse with some money in it, you're probably looking at petty larceny. If you're taking things like a car, then you get into some of the more um, grand larceny type of crimes. Guys, if you see someone using force or a threat, it is not larceny anymore. Using force or threat of force removes it from larceny and sort of upgrades it, if you will, to robbery. And you can see larceny that is accomplished by a trick. So if you trick someone into handing you something and they willingly give it to you based on the lie that you just told or the trick that you just played, that still counts as larceny. You can't be like, well, she willingly gave it to me, so it doesn't count as larceny anymore. It does. So for example, Julia asks Amber if she will hold her purse while she uses the restroom. So Julia gives Amber her purse. Amber doesn't take it from her, right? She willingly gives it to her. After a few minutes, Shannon, so now we have a third party, comes up and says, hey, um, Amber wants me to get her purse. She's done in the restroom. She said, come get her purse. And uh, Julia, or I'm sorry, Julia wants her purse. So Amber says, okay, here you go. All right, guys, even though Shannon got Amber to give her the purse willingly, she got her to give her the purse by saying that Julia asked her to retrieve it. Okay, so she tricked her into giving her the purse. So if Shannon is now going to be charged with larceny, she can't use the fact that Amber willingly handed her the purse as a defense because it was based on her own deception. Okay. Um, shoplifting is a form of larceny. So if you go into the store and you take something off the shelf without paying for it, technically that fulfills all the elements of, of larceny and you have committed that specific crime in the state of Pennsylvania. Guys, here's the key, all right? Um, this is another key to larceny, is your intent to permanently deprive the owner must be present at the time of the taking. So if you take something 
and then a few minutes later you change your mind and you go to return it, technically you have already committed larceny at that point. All right. So going back to my example, let's say I walk by, I see Abby sitting on the park bench. She's not paying attention. I take her purse. I take 10 steps away and I think, oh, what are you doing? This is terrible. That's your student. You just stole her purse. Um, you know, nothing good is going to come of this. So I turn around and I take it and I hand it back to her. Okay, guys, even though I gave it back to her, technically I, com I committed the crime of larceny because at the time I took it, I had the intent to permanently deprive her. And again, some of you are thinking, how would you ever prove that? Um, for purposes of this, just believe me. Okay, so <clears throat> Noelle is walking her dog. She sees Davin has left his garage door open and lo and behold, there is his wallet on the floor of the garage. She ducks in, she grabs it, she intends to keep it. Um, she gets back to the street, okay? So she has taken property that doesn't belong to her. She did not have a legal right to take it. She took it intentionally. She walks away with it. As she's walking away, she intends to permanently deprive him of his property, okay? Once she gets out into the street, she's like, ah, oh, that was kind of crappy. I shouldn't have done that, <clears throat> all right? Um, even if she returns it to the garage, technically at this point in time, she has committed larceny. All right. Robbery is essentially the same as larceny, except what we're looking at here is basically larceny with the threat or the use of force. So for robbery, you can have two things. You can have someone threaten you, um, give me your money or I will shoot you. Or you could have someone actually use force. They shoot you and then they take your money. All right. So it's the unlawful taking of property from the person or the immediate possession of another. So you have to take it from the person or their immediate possession. So let's say back to my example with Abby sitting on the bench. Let's say her purse is sitting two feet away from her. It's on the other side of the bench. If I walk up to her and say, give me your purse or I'm going to punch you in the face. All right. Even though the purse is a few feet away from her, it's in her immediate possession. It's sitting right there. If she reaches out, she can grab it. And I used the threat of force to take it from her. All right. Um, robbery is sort of a hybrid crime because we have two harms here. We have the, the crime against property, which is that I'm taking her purse. And then we have the crime against the person, which is that someone was either threatened or actually hurt in, in the commission of this crime. All right. Guys, a lot of times when we talk about somebody, um, having their house broken into, we use the term robbery, uh, and that is not correct. And we'll get to burglary. I'll probably put that on the next um, video for you guys. But if you're not home and you come home and see that someone has been in your house and someone has taken your things, you have not been robbed. And we hear people say that all the time. I've been robbed. Um, and the reason that you haven't been robbed is because in that case, there was no force or threat. You weren't even there. Right. So in that case, we have larceny and burglary. Um, but in order for there to be a robbery, you have to either be threatened or you have to be harmed. And I made this little slide to sort of show you the difference here um, of larceny versus robbery, just so you don't get them confused. Larceny, an example, would be a pickpocket who takes your wallet and you don't even notice they have done it. Right. Why? There was no force or intimidation. In fact, you didn't even know it happened. So even though they had to go into your pocket and take the wallet, that doesn't really count as force um, because you weren't harmed and you weren't aware of it. OK, on the other hand, let's say you have a mugger that knocks you down and takes your wallet. In this case, we have robbery um, because someone used force to take your property. OK, I'm going to stop there for now. We have a few more crimes against property that we'll finish up in the next video. If you have any questions, either shoot me an email or put a comment here in the Google Classroom um, so that everyone can see it. All right, guys, have a good one.